will be the first video of many um, involving the journey of this Toyota rock crawler. Um, I'll go ahead and post a picture of how it used to look when I first bought it, because uh, it's came a long way since then. So the purpose of this truck is to be a fun weekend vehicle that I can use for rock crawling and off-roading and basically hitting up trails and whatnot. But um, I also want it to be able to function on the road and be able to drive it to the trails. I'm not looking for this to be a trailer vehicle, but a roadworthy vehicle. So let's go ahead and go through what I've done to it so far. And kind of gonna have to excuse all the stuff in the back of it. We're gonna be mounting this toolbox today, but the rear end has a trail gear four inch lift kit with six inch shackles. And I believe these are 56 inch uh, leaf springs with Bilstein 12 inch uh, shocks mounted on top of the axle. I think this might be a problem. I might have to move them to the bottom or the side of the axle, but we'll see how it does when we flex it out. Uh, we're using a low range off-road upper shock mount welded between the frame rails there. And we're using four crawler e-brake extensions to get the e-brake cable to clear the leaf springs, as well as a trail gear U-bolt flip kit. And basically all these parts, with the exception of the upper shock mount and the and the e-brake extensions, are included with Trail Gear's classic rear lift kit. And we will be replacing those with um probably 37s. I think that's the largest I would go on Toyota axles. Maybe in the future I'll go to full width axles and run 40s on it, but for now we're probably just going to go to 37s. We have a solid axle swap. This truck is an 88, so it was IFS when I first bought it using the low range off-road front hanger. I chose this one because it is kind of different. You don't see this one very often and um it's a little bit lower profile, so you don't get as much lift. We move the hanger forward three quarters of an inch. And we're using four inch trail gear leaf springs with the, the bump stop landing pads cut one inch shorter to get a little bit more flex just past negative out of these springs. We also have the high steer, Bill Stain 12 inch shocks, and a built axle with Marlin Crawler knuckleball gussets, a full rebuild kit from Low Range Off-Road, 529 gears, Marlin full face armor and truss, U-bolt flip kit, and V6 brakes. All right, the interior is a work in progress. It wasn't that nice in here. And it's honestly something I've neglected because I've been working on all of the mechanical aspects of the truck first. So it has second gen 4Runner seats in it. The dash is not really connected. Um, I had to replace the ignition and uh, a couple other things. So the truck itself has 330,000 miles on it, but the engine only has 700 on it. And when I bought the truck, I verified this. We have receipts proving it. And if you look down there at the motor, you can see that you can't really see it on video, but the block is very clean. It's not indicative of an engine with 330,000 miles. Okay, so a couple things I wanna get done to it today. I wanna to get this toolbox mounted. I wanna to get this bed cleared out, drill some holes into the bed here, and then mount the toolbox down. I know a lot of guys use those little J-hooks. Um, I'm not gonna use them because this is gonna be used to go rock crawling and the toolbox will be shaking all over the place if I use J-hooks. So I'm gonna bolt this thing down um, nice and tight. My dual transfer case is right here that I'm working on right now. Um, another thing we're doing today is we're going to install this custom brake line that I bent the other night. We're going to install this on the driver's side to replace the factory brake line, uh, basically because I just don't like how it looks. Then we're going to be bringing the truck in this way because that's the way that I want it to be so I could work on it. And we're going to be dropping the transfer case out in a later video 
and installing those dual cases. One other thing I forgot to mention that we're doing today is we need to cut this guy off right here. This needs to be ground off the frame because when you go from IFS to solid axle, you are limiting your steering when turning to the right. So we need to cut that off the frame, clean it up, and recheck our alignment here. So I have to get the battery hooked up before I can get this thing out of the garage. One of the things with these older Toyota pickups, if you notice you're having any weird electrical issues, you might want to take a look at your fusible link wire. So this is the fusible link wire, and it's basically a slow burn fuse. And over the course of your pickup's life, your previous owners have probably had to replace this thing. And they've likely cut it here and spliced it with a really, um, you know, shit wire for a lack of better terms. And it's probably tightened on there with some weird wire clamp and not getting a good solid connection. So take a look at this. And if you need to just buy a replacement, you probably should. You could also replace this with a solid piece of wire if you'd like, but a lot of people will tell you not to do that. All right, so I got the bed cleared out so we can mount that toolbox in here. Um, one of the things I wanna do, and I know, I know, a lot of people are gonna be like, it's a rock crawler, it doesn't matter. Just because it's a rock crawler doesn't mean it has to be a piece of shit. There's a lot of um, metal that'll be under that toolbox that I might not be able to totally get dry if the truck were to get wet. And I see a lot of exposed metal here. So I'm gonna paint the area under the toolbox just to ensure that we don't form any rust holes over the years. All right, I got the area under that toolbox pretty clean, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the holes for where the toolbox is gonna go, move the toolbox and paint it, and then mount it up. nice rust-free surface for that thing to sit on for uh, however long it stays there. So while that's drying, I'm going to start taking off the driver wheel and installing that custom-made brake line. All right, so the brake line that's on this thing, it's not a bad brake line. There's nothing wrong with it, honestly. It's just the IFS line bent to fit the straight axle. Um, but I bent this, this guy here, how did it go? Which will sit in there like this, which I personally think is a better uh, bent brake line. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this in there, and then I'm gonna take the IFS brake line off, uh, clean it out, and store it in the toolbox as a trail spare. All right, so I'm gonna wanna do this as fast as possible to make as little mess as necessary. I go ahead and loosen here at the caliper with a line wrench. If you don't use a line wrench, your chances of stripping um, or rounding off the edges of the brake line are very high. And I'm about to be a hypocrite because I don't have a line wrench for my new uh, 12 millimeter brake line going on here, but We'll try not to cause any damage. I'm going the wrong way. All right. We're already spurting out, so we're already running out of time here. Um, go ahead and get this over the knuckle so we don't damage all this paint. Very messy job. No way around it. We're going to put the new brake line on with one hand as this one is pissing out all the brake fluid. Our hands are completely covered in brake fluid. Some brake parts cleaner and get our gloves clean. All right, so this honestly fits pretty well. 
I don't have many complaints with this. Just bend it a little bit like that. That's good. That's perfect to me. I don't think that needs any adjustment. Just gonna tighten that thing up and we should be good to go. But as I mentioned before, fuck. As I mentioned before, this steering stop has gotta go. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this thing off now. Exceptionally hard to get to this when everything's in the way, but we got it. We didn't fucking break anything in the process. Might have slipped off and hit the pitman arm a little bit, but <laughs> we didn't break or cut through anything. So everything is still looking clear. All right, so the toolbox took a little bit longer than expected. It was kind of a bitch to get this thing on, but it's not going anywhere. Shaking this shakes the whole truck. We got this thing evenly spaced on each side. It's one and three sixteenths out on each side. I use uh, five sixteenths hardware from the local True Value. Just put some fender washers on there and then tightened it down with uh, some nuts underneath. Hard to see in there, but you get the picture. I don't know. It's kind of hard to show you guys what's going on in there, but I plan to keep all my trail spares in here. I'll make an organizer for it and it'll be pretty, uh, pretty sick once it's done. Probably made in the USA. All right.